All right, everyone, it's one o'clock, so let's get started. Welcome to Generate Revenue with Cisco and Avic. I am Sarah Cunningham Scarf, Avic's Marketing Communications Specialist. And before I hand it over to our presenters for today, I'm just going to run through a few housekeeping things so everyone has an awesome experience during their talk. First, if you can't hear us, that's not good. So please check your computer audio or view your settings. We want this to be an interactive webinar, so please post your questions in the Q&A panel, not the chat panel as our presenters won't be able to see it. And they will answer our questions after the presentation. There will be a recording of this webinar available after the webinar in a few hours on avic.com slash frankly MSP in case, you want to sh in case you want to circle back on anything that they talk about today. All right, so here's what we're going to cover today. Here's our agenda. Today, um, Patrick Albert, Ovix AVP of Product Management, is chatting with Brad Sakai, a Senior Product Line Manager at Cisco. They're going to be talking about our new integration and how you can use it to go deeper on network assessments and find opportunities to make money by replacing network gear. We're going to be talking about how selling managed network services can help you own your client networks, how you can bundle hardware refreshes into your monthly managed network services fee to generate more revenue, how Avic leverages the Cisco Services API to automatically gather network device warranty patch and firmware information, how to use this unprecedented visibility to sell clients on a hardware refresh, and lastly, as I said, there will be a Q&A at the end of the session. And now that that's out of the way, let me introduce your hosts. First up, Patrick Albert, our AVP of Product Management, has worked in the MSP space since 2005, when he worked for an ISP in a rural area and developed his appreciation for network management. He then transitioned to technical support and rose through the ranks of product management at an MSP software vendor before bringing his talents to Avic. He continues to pursue his mission of creating efficiency and enabling MSP success through automation. And joining him today is Brad Sakai, a senior product line manager at Cisco Systems and the Enterprise Networking Group. He's focused on the small business market segment, so you guys who are here today. He's been in the networking industry for over two decades, accumulating experience in a wide variety of technologies. Outside of the office, you could find him by the pool swimming or out and about trying to improve his photography skills. All right, that's it for me for now. Take it away, Patrick. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Sarah. And uh, thanks, Brad, for joining me today. So just to kick things off, uh, you know, I think this is, this is a fairly important comment, but I think it's, uh, you know, and it's things that you've probably heard quite often, but you know, the, the network nowadays is that much more important than it was years ago. You know, it is, it is your, your customers and your clients vital connection to everything that they really need to do their jobs. And if you look back into some stats, you know, around the 2014 timeline, uh, you know, just roughly about half of businesses said that they had some type of hosted uh, application or infrastructure uh, or SaaS application. Uh, and you know, fast forward to 2017, that rose to 70%, and this is continuing to to rapidly rise. And you know, those of you that have been on site when there is a network outage or an internet outage, um, you'll be very very familiar with the gopher effect. Uh, that's what that's one of the things we call it. Uh, and, you know, you'll you'll probably know what I'm talking about by I want to explain it, but it's, it's basically when people are working, clicking away at their cubicles, working hard, doing what they need to do, then the network goes down. And one by one, you kind of see heads bobbing up and down, turning left and right, and you're like, hey, uh, did the internet go down? And the other guy's like, hey, yeah, I, I, I don't know, actually, I, I don't have access to the network. Do, do you have access to the network? And you kind of start seeing that bob up and down. You start seeing kind of people asking the question over and over. Uh, so that's what we call the gopher effect, and it's, uh, you know, it's ultimately, the MSP's job to know what's going on inside of a network, what's what's happening with your client's network, uh, and to make sure that you know the clients stay, you know, keep connected, keep humming along, uh, and if there is an outage, that you're aware of it and trying to get ahead of it as much as possible, um, because the gopher effect obviously you know has has the the impact of of you know loss 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 of connectivity, but you also have the loss of productivity uh, around people trying to get distracted, trying to figure out what's all going on, on the internet. 
uh, or if it's a specific application or not. So, you know, it's definitely the MSP's job to, to make sure you know what's going on in there. And, you know, at the end of the day, your clients rely on you to keep them connected and productive. And that's why we like to compare the network to electricity. You know, a network should just be silently, uh, this should be a silent and just reliable function that's in the background, always powering their business to do what, you know, let them do what they do best. Uh, and it should be as easy as, as easy to, as to manage as kind of flicking a switch. So it's just really, really critical. And that is, uh, as I mentioned, that trend is obviously continuing uh, with higher and higher SaaS adoption. So you know, how, do you, how do you as an MSP keep that business connection running? Uh, so one of the one of the big trends that we've seen a lot of our partners start doing is offering their clients managed network services. Now, what does that mean? To to us, it means truly owning your cl your clients' networks. It means proactively monitoring and managing your clients' network so that you know before your client you can spot potential issues before they arise and before they affect the network. You provide strategic guidance to make sure that the business that the network is always designed to support both with the current and evolving business needs so that as they, as they add in new sites, add in new applications, as, as they grow in terms of employee headcount, that, the, that you're providing the strategic guidance to keep in alignment with their business objectives. And lastly, to manage the network risk, which is really what we're gonna be talking about today. You know, old outdated network gear presents a huge risk to your clients' networks. So, um, th this risk, I mean, we can get into some numbers actually right now. Uh, across the 30 to 40,000 networks that uh, that Avic has visibility into by MSPs and their uh, into their customers, you know, these are some of the stats that we're finding on Cisco devices, and the risk here is absolutely staggering. You know, as an MSP, you know, sweating the assets is is just is is, is counterproductive. And we'll talk quite a bit more about the integration with Cisco in a bit. But first we wanted to show you just so how many Cisco devices are out there that are out of date and unpro unprotected. Um, Brad, do you wanna just jump in and uh, summarize some of these stats? Yeah, sure, Pat. So it was interesting to see the data and what you shared with us, but let me just kind of go through the stats we, 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 what we have here. The 63% are not covered by a service contract. And when I say service contract, that's the smart net service that uh, you typically purchase for support. 43% are out of warranty. Warranty is, you know, an attribute of the product. Uh, a lot of the new products will have limited lifetime warranty, but uh, that's, that's a pretty big number. And something we're not showing in AVIC today, but, uh, you know, will probably be shown in the future. 40% of the uh, switches we saw were actually end of sale. And so that's, that's a real big number. And that means there's Typically end of sale, you have a finite time where you're gonna get uh, software updates and warranty support. So that's pretty scary. And even more scary is this, <laughs> uh, I don't have the exact numbers, but we are, we're seeing products in use today in, uh, in networks being managed by Avic that, were, that went EOS in the early 2000s. So they're, they've been around for decades, uh, which is real good. Says a lot about Cisco hardware, but that's, you know, that's, you know, a support problem waiting to happen. So we've kind of, here's our, I mean, we've, we've identified, and there's probably more, four challenges with using our warranty and EOS equipment. You know, one is future readiness. Uh, the older products are really lacking in some of the security features to deal with today's threats. The other challenge is they, they, they don't meet the power and demand and bandwidth needs of IoT devices and uh, Wi-Fi 6. So they may not have the uh, power needed to power some of the pan tilt zoom cameras that are being deployed. And certainly Wi-Fi 6 requires uh, PoE plus plus uh, it requires or should have uh, M gig, which is 2.5 or 5 gigabit capability in the switch. The other the part supportability. Uh, it's lacking the legacy UI. I mean, it has legacy UIs and we worked hard in the with the recent pub, uh, products to update those UIs, but it also lacks APIs, which is kind of a new up and coming trend with networking products. And we know that, you know, the Cisco management tools today, you know, are probably not being used by MSPs uh, just because they're designed for enterprises. So what we've been putting in the latest products is APIs that can uh, in the future work with Avic or other tools that allow you to kind of manage it through those tools rather than try to have a enterprise Cisco to, uh, force you to use an enterprise Cisco tool. 
Uh, finally, recovery from failure is kind of a big one. With an old product, you know, it's not a matter of swapping out the hardware and doing a config on the restore. You're not, you can't leverage that feature in Avic. You really have to start over and create a new config for these new products. And the final one is vulnerabilities. Networking gear is not immune to hackers nor uh, nation states, including our own uh, in the U.S. The NSA. Uh, recently, I, actually, it was last year. You know, there was a um, two vulnerabilities with Intel processors, Spectre and Meltdown. And there's definitely a number of uh, products out there, including Cisco, that have uh, that use Intel processors. So it's good that you want to be on. Uh, you know, products where we're keeping the software up to date. And when I talk about EOS, one of the things, milestones is three years after EOS, uh, Cisco stops doing product vulnerability updates. So it's really important to know the lifecycle information, um, you know, by that. And we'll talk more about that, but back to you, Pat. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, it's like, you know, as you mentioned, so within the, the EOS kind of range, there's the various different milestones you hit. Uh, and another one is also on, you know, just patching the, offering patches to the device. And you and I were joking around uh, a couple of days ago around with the, with the devices that, that went and EOS in the early 2000s, you know, you were legitimately starting to think of like, you know, did the Y2K issues affect those devices? Because that's legitimately how old some of those devices were, which uh, brings back some fond memories, I'm sure. So, and I'm moving on, um, you know, so we, we just talked about you know, the, there's, there's quite a bit of equipment out there that is out of date. Uh, and we started talking about, you know, why, why this is starting to matter. Now, it, it turns out that it's obviously very, very hard to keep your, met, your, your clients, man, clients networks running and running efficiently because there's a lot of this old gear. You know, as Brad just mentioned, if some of these devices peter out, your clients spend thousands of dollars in unplanned expenses to get you back where you were before. Right, and that's a really, really, really key point that we'll talk through a little bit, but the unplanned expenditure is obviously a fairly big pain point and a fairly big surprise to the, to the end customer. So, you know, with that and with all the reliance on the network, um, you know, the old and outdated gear and, and you know, firmware, older firmware versions that absolutely represent a pretty significant risk to your customers and their customers' networks. You know, these, these older versions of firmware can have, have open vulnerabilities that open up their risk to malicious actors uh, or, or old devices just stop working altogether, as we mentioned. And as an MSP, it's ultimately your job to point out that these are the devices that are ultimately ticking time bombs that could lead to, you know, business continuity issues uh, or fairly large expenses down the road. Now, to make, you know, to, to make a hardware refresh uh, a little more appetizing to your clients and kind of reduce the financial risk of a, of a major capital expenditure. You, what we're seeing a lot of our partners do is start to bundle the cost of replacing devices that are ticking time bombs directly into your monthly managed network service fees. You know, that way the cost is spread out over several months and ultimately is budgeted accordingly. The last thing that I want to ever do is go to my CFO with a very, very, very large expenditure and say, hey, we didn't really see this coming, but really need twenty thousand dollars. Now that that's a much harder thing to swallow than that than to plan that upfront and and you know understand that that's coming. If I need to add something into the budget for next year or even late further on in the year, it's a much easier thing to swallow than you know coming to them at the last second and say, hey, something failed. We got to spend a lot of money. So this strategy really helps helps you you, you helps you proactively protect your clients uh, and, and really help you generate some of that revenue. Now, but you know, these, these hardware refreshes can also be a tough sell. You know, by combining reliable hardware with your managed services, you can really focus on the business benefits and the, and the value that the clients get from reducing their risk. And that's the value of you as the MSP. Your clients continue, can continue working uh, without them worrying, and, you know, since you protect them better from downtime by having you know, up-to-date and, and, uh, and, and recent devices. So we'll talk about pricing for the service a little bit later on, uh, but Brad, I know you, you actually had a really interesting and relevant story on this. Do you wanna, do you wanna just jump in? Yeah, it's not networking. Well, it is sort of networking related. We, I know you talked about networking being electricity. Often we at Cisco refer to it as plumbing. And years ago when I was a new homeowner, you know, I had to have my water heater replaced. And obviously I bought a new home, I was low on cash and I was not happy the thing died. 
It was just out of the homeowner's warranty that we typically have in the U.S. So when my plumber replaced it, he wrote the installation date, uh, which was that day, uh, you know, with a Sharpie on the outside of the water heater. And he told me these things last eight to 10 years, which as again, a young, uninformed person, I assume they last forever. But anyway, he wrote it, said, okay, these things will last eight to 10 years. I'll talk to you, you know, that time frame. You know, I was talking to my wife, you know, after nine years of use, I was telling her, hey, we're living on borrowed time. This thing's going to go any time, but we decided to keep sweating it out, and at year 10, it started to leak, and we had to replace it. Replacing the second one was definitely far less traumatic than the first. <laughs> By writing the date on the water heater, our plumber kind of set the expectation that this thing would not last forever, and we made the decision to sweat the ass and sucked it up when we had to take cold showers. So while taking cold showers is not fun, <laughs> there was no impact to my pocketbook. However, network downtime is a different story, especially when it's your client's network and not your own. For most of your clients, the network downtime equals lost revenue. I think it's easy to see there are huge advantages in knowing the lifecycle information of the networking hardware to help you and your client better understand the risk and proactively plan the network evolution. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Brad. And I think you know, that was a really key point you touched on there is expectations. Right. If you know, it, just as human beings, if we if we don't have the information, we 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 come up with the story that that feels right to us. And your situation with the with the water heater, you know, had that had that person not set the right expectation, like you said, you would have just assumed this thing's going to last forever or probably at least twenty years, right? And I think that expectation is really really critical because if it's not set early enough and it becomes a surprise, that's where painful conversations happen. Uh, and if it's not set early enough. The, they will form their own opinions and their own expectations based off of, you know, not necessarily based off of data, just based off feelings. And it is far more difficult to change an expectation than set an expectation. So I love, I love the story. So thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Brad. No problem, Pat. So, you know, based off of that, you know, so one of the things that we wanted to talk a little bit about here was, you know, avoiding that, avoiding that huge CapEx, uh, unplanned CapEx, expenditure is really, really beneficial for the MSP. Expectations are part of it, you know, but at the same time, you know, bundling, bundling that hardware for existing customers may be a pretty hard pill to swallow if it's not already built into your pricing. So therefore, Cisco is really excited to offer this 0% uh, financing program. Um, Brad, you want to go ahead and just give a quick summary here? Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, a lot of us and, you know, maybe are not having set those expectations. So here, this program is designed to help that. And what it is, it's a 0% financing uh, program, 36 months for the term. And it's, the requirements are pretty simple. I mean, it's a, you need to finance a minimum of $5,000. Uh, only 25% of that has to be Cisco gear. So if you're buying cables, patch cables or other, uh, Stuff, that could be part of the financing. If you have installation services, uh, that could be part of the financing, you know, one-time fees or services, I should say, as long as it's uh, less than 25%. But this is a, you know, what Cisco's done is we partner with Great America Financial to offer this. And Great America Financial, for those of you that visit some of the shows like IT Nation, you know, has been in the, doing this for equipment, uh, for network equipment, but also office furniture and other things. So they've been doing this a while and special way of catered to the MSPs. So we're real excited about, about this. And to explain more, we'll have some slide, a slide later in to kind of show you, you know, the benefits of the program and how you can work it into your sales pitch. I should note uh, one thing just real quick and we'll show it at the end and we'll put in the chat. This is actually went live today, so it's available today. You could go to the website www.greatamerica.com slash Cisco to learn more about it. And we'll put that URL, I believe, in the chat uh, so you can click on it from there. Uh, but back to you, Pat. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, and as you mentioned, we'll go into a couple of actual examples that will break this down a little bit more. But as you can imagine, you know, spread, spreading the cost of these devices over 36 months uh, makes it a much more palatable discussion uh, this is a much easier thing to have, to have a discussion around, especially when it's uh, you know it, when the expectations are set appropriately and it's, uh, it's planned. So you know now that we've talked a little bit about you know the the what you know what opportunity exists, 
Now I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, how, how do we find this opportunity to sell this type of bundle within your client base? So let's talk about how you actually take this to the next step. You know, so we know there's a fairly large lucrative opportunity. Um, now, it, it, the, for the first thing we're going to start out with is it's a really good idea to conduct a network assessment on both existing and prospective customer sites. So a network assessment is, is really there to help you cement the business case for making changes to your customers' networks. You know, you'll, you'll first be able to customize your proposal and solidify the value of replacing old devices with real tangible proof. You know, the tr there's absolute truth to the saying, you know, seeing is believing. Uh, it's a one-time value add that you can deliver right away. You can prove that you have the expertise to proactively take care of their network, whether they, you know, what, if they're a prospective customer. And you can also use this to differentiate yourself from the pack. You know, differentiating on price is, 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 as we all know, a race to the bottom. You know, this way you can actually differentiate on value, which is absolutely what, what we believe is the right approach. And I think what, what we're hearing all of our, all of our partners uh, agree with that as well. You know, you, and, but to do that, you know, you, you have all the tools to get the right insights and to, you know, to make sure that you can help them understand what needs to get done to optimize their environment, to make sure that they're not affected by degraded hardware. You know, and you know, last but not least on the uh, network assessment side, you know, this, or, or, uh, and I guess along the same topic of uh, surprises earlier, you know, sometimes devices are hidden and or completely forgotten about. You know, the last thing you want to do is send a perspective, a contract, uh, to only then discover a little bit later that there's a you know, old switch from 1998 that you didn't include in your quote, uh, and you have to eat that cost or have the uncomfortable conversation about charging them more, which is never a fun conversation either. So that, that's, that's why in doing a network assessment is really, really important. Um, now, the steps in, involved in, in, in actually conducting a network assessment uh, used to be really, really, really manual, uh, which used to mean a very, very expensive thing for MSPs to do, uh, or a lot of them just didn't do it. You know, and that's why a lot of MSPs choose to use Avic to help automate this process. Um, so those of you that haven't used Avic before, here's a couple of quick basics on what we do. I don't want to do, go too, too deep into this, but at least to give you a couple of highlights here. So we help the, the automate some of the network management tasks that really drag out your time and resources today. So you can provide more proactive managed services, uh, far more efficiency, far efficiently, uh, and far more cost effectively. You know, we'll create a real-time network map of your customer's network so you can have full insight as to what's out there, which is what you can see on the screen. Uh, and our discovery, our discovery process includes automated documentation of these network devices, uh, which we can share with many of the popular PSA platforms uh, like ConnectWise or Datto's Autotask, uh, or, like th or with third-party platforms um, that specialize in documentation like IT Blue or Passportal. We've also got a bunch of pre-configured alerts tuned to industry best practices, so you know about problems on the network far before your clients do. Uh, and one of the last po really popular features that partners really love is our automated network device configuration backups, uh, comparisons, and restores. So as we're, as we're discovering devices and we can log into them, we'll actually pull down a copy of its, of its configuration and we'll do that on a regular basis, meaning that not from a time perspective, but as changes are actually made, we'll take a backup of that configuration so that you can then see what's happened over a period of time. You can do these comparisons and in a lot of cases restore it as well. So, you know, by using the, the real-time map and automated discovery process, you can find network devices that you or even the client didn't even know about. Now, we hear all the time about partners finding you know, just surprise devices. You know, one of our partners even find an, found an entire hidden network on a manufacturing floor, uh, which would have cost him significantly if he had quoted the work without knowing about those devices. Um, then you can also check to see if the network is fit for purpose by looking at the device, uh, the Avic device dashboard. There you can do things like understand whether the site has enough IP addresses, et cetera. Um, and then during this assessment, is this is where you also want to take a look and find any infrastructure that's potentially a ticking time bomb. So by taking a look at the Avic alerts, you can understand the source of problems like broadcast storms, network loops, uh, or if a switch ports traffic is, is, is broadcast as opposed to unicast or multicast. And you can tune these alerts to your personal preferences so the alerts don't tell you something that you already know about, like you know, potentially a high bandwidth utilization uh, when a weekly backup is taking place as an example. 
So this is a huge revenue gener generation opportunity. Uh, if a device is causing problems, you can obviously rec make the recommendation to the, to the client to replace it. Um, you can also best un better understand and provide a, be provide a better answer to one of the most popular questions uh, that we see in all of our MSPs see is, you know, why is the network slow? The answer ranges from, you know, the internet connection is flaky to users are maxing out the internet connection to lower level networking issues. So we'll give you a lot more visibility and, and help you paint a better story around answering that question. Uh, and you can also understand what interface, and you can also sort by interfaces rather by utilization. Um, so you can see devices that have high CPU, where you can see that the culprit, where you can actually just see the culprit uh, you know, by a click of a button. Or if there's any slowness issues, as a part of the assessment, you'll, be, you'll, you'll need to be able to say, you know, here are the potential bottlenecks that we foresee based off of some of the utilization rates. And you know, more importantly, I think as you start getting some of the historical data, so some, some so additional uh, data points over time, what you can really do is start tailoring that more towards their business needs. So if they aren't planning on growing their employees or you know, offering additional services or taking on new SaaS applications or anything of the sort, if they're not planning on making any changes, Here's the steady state, and you can make a recommendation based off of that, whether this is whether they're at 80% capacity or otherwise. But understanding the business side will help you pair those two things together and make a recommendation. So if they are growing by 20%, you can use you know, a lot of this data to be able to help you understand and make a better educated decision around some of these recommendations, which is really going to inspire that, that confidence that you, in your abilities. Um, and kind of last but not least on along network assessments. You can take a look at your know, compliance audits against your standards, or even if they have if the, if the clients have standards, um, just to identify some common things. Like we unfortunately and fortunately see a lot of default credentials used on devices. I say fortunately and unfortunately, uh, because on the you know fortunately side, you know if we if their device is using default network credentials, we can actually get a lot more data without without anyone having to plug credentials into us. Which, me, which makes us look like rock stars. Uh, but if we can do that, anyone else can as well. So that's, that's, that's a fairly scary thing to see, you know, how many networks actually have default, default credentials. So this is where you can come in again, make some recommendations and uh, prove some of your expertise there. Now, so many of these steps in, in the assessment process uh, can be automated through AVIC, as, as I was just mentioning, kind of went through. You know, but one thing that we saw was really still missing on the network side, and it was really hard to know walking through an environment whether a, you know, a, whether a device was under warranty or whether it was up to date or on the recommended version. You, know, you can't do that by just looking at the device. Um, and sourcing this information was traditionally you know, a fairly time-intensive process. You know, by going to Cisco's website and looking up serial numbers one by one, you know, that was a fairly huge time drag on, you know, and, and resource drag. It was really, really important to do. Uh, we, however, unfortunately saw a lot of MSPs not do it just because it was so time intensive and there's a lot of other things that needed to be done. So they unfortunately skipped it. So, however, without knowing this information, your clients are exposed to that huge risk we've talked about. You know, if the devices go down or aren't under warranty, your clients face that huge cost we talked about. Uh, if they don't have the latest patches, they, they're exposed to a, that, uh, a risk of, of a breach. Now, so th this, these are, these are, this is one of the most important parts of network assessments that's not being done today. Uh, so we're, that's, what we're, that's ultimately what we're trying to address here. Um, Brad, maybe you can, you can add some extra context uh, as to you know, why it's really important for people to know about this infrastructure. Yeah, I think we kind of talked about that earlier. I mean, just the, the vulnerabilities, the supportability all comes into play and to be, you know, have a problem potentially and then call and say, hey, this is no longer being supported. And I know we saw that question come up earlier, you know, when, what percentage is out of support? You don't want to have that information and be surprised. So, you know, may, being proactive and knowing about you is, is key to keeping your customer's network up, up and running. Awesome. And, you know, I guess this actually ties pretty well into your expectation setting earlier. You know, if you're on site and you're, or you're, you're just working with a client in general uh, and you're having an issue with, with some of the gear and you don't know it's out of support, you may actually make some commitments that you don't, that you can't actually fulfill on easily. 
uh, and because it's all around setting the expectation. If the person that's working the issue has the expectation that this device has no support, that obviously changes your path quite a bit. And you know, knowing that in advance is uh, is definitely important. Yeah, especially as you do a network assessment. If you have a new client, <laughs> you know what you charge or what you plan or what you deliver up for, you know, may be different knowing that you're, they're running some old stuff and, uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge to support it. Absolutely. So as we just talked about, you know, Avic today does a lot of the documentation required to help you do a network assessment. Um, but what we're really, really excited to announce, and we, and we, we made it go live a couple of weeks ago in the product itself, uh, is a integration with Cisco that bridges some of these unknowns. So the AVIC of today, well, I guess a couple of weeks ago, uh, provided device health and utilization metrics and you know, you know, overall device status. Uh, but what we're really, really excited to do with Cisco here is bring in some of that, that missing link. So bringing in some of the warranty status, the service coverage status, you know, the recommended software version, uh, you know, so automating some of these things so you can actually do them in a network assessment without actually spending any time. You know, so as long as, and we'll show this in a moment in terms of uh, showing what this looks like in the product, but as long as we know, as long as, as long as we can reach the device and pull in some basic information like, like serial numbers and such, and as, as long as the Cisco APIs support it, this is something we're actually just gonna do completely automatically. There's no action required on, on the MSP's perspective for us to do this completely out of the box and completely automatic. Um, and there's lots more, I think we're, uh, Brad and I are in deep discussions in terms of what else we can bring in. You know, we'd love to bring in more information around EOS, uh, so the end of sale and some of the, end of, and, and some of the other end of indicators, uh, so end of dates rather, around you know, when, when, they, when they stop offering patches and security vulnerability patches, et cetera. Uh, but more to come on that, and that's uh, definitely some exciting integration points. Now, so in terms of you know, what this looks like in the product, uh, we've got this in quite a few places. So if you're on the very, very far left-hand side, you can see uh, our device dashboard. So when you're on, when you're looking at a device, a Cisco device in Avic, you'll now see the, rec the software version that it's on right now and also the recommended software version. And then further below, you'll see the service covered status and the warranty covered status uh, and, and, the, and the warranty end date. And then we'll also roll that up into a couple of different reports for you around the warranty status and the recommended software version. So trying to bring all of this information, again, all, completely automatically, uh, and thanks to our awesome integration with the Cisco Services API, bringing this all in and making it really, really easily accessible. Um, yeah, Br Brad, what are, your, what are your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, Pat, you know, I have to, um, one thing, when that EOS data I shared, you know, right now EOS is not an OVIC. I actually had to do that manually. So I, I, being my time's valuable, I paid my daughter to do it and took her a few hours. Uh, so I definitely appreciate the automation you have is going to save MSPs a ton of time and that's huge. But I think having the information is one thing and how you present it is another. And what I, what I think is great having an OVIC is the ability to be able to show you're, you know, rather than tell your customer you have a bunch of old stuff, you can actually show it, show the information uh, in there and kind of show the dates and what it is. And it just looks that much more professional. It looks, uh, you know, more neutral and just puts validity behind the words you do. So this is, this is awesome. This is something that, you know, is available and some enterprise tools to, to have it for MSPs is, you know, something we've been trying to do, uh, unfortunately, we just don't have the capability to bring it down market with our today's tool. So we're, we're really excited about this partnership, Pat. Yeah, awesome. And just looking at uh, some of the, the chat messages that's going on, which I'm trying to glance at as much as I can. Uh, it looks like this is uh, definitely an exciting point for, for, uh, for quite a few of the, those of you. Uh, and I think there's, there's definitely a roadmap that we want to talk about in terms of what else we can bring in. So EOS or EOX is one of the things we talked about. Uh, and bringing in things like vulnerabilities or P-cert data, uh, definitely some of the things that we're, we're, in, we're in discussion around. So look forward to some more information on that. So, uh, you know, as, so as, we, as, we, as we talked about, you know, gathering that information is, is part of the story. 
Uh, and as Brad just kind of alluded to, you know, taking that information and how you actually tell your, how you tell your clients is the other part. So now that you've really uncovered some of these existing issues on a client's network, you know, including devices that may be out of warranty, service, et cetera, it's time to start having the conversation with your client about how you can improve their network. And remembering the, really remember the positioning here. It's about the value of healthy, up-to-date network equipment. Uh, not, about, not about the dates, you know, as Brad was just alluding to, it's not about, you know, showing them is, is one thing, but the conversation absolutely needs to be about the value of having up-to-date healthy equipment. Uh, and ultimately, you know, what's the opposite of that is what, what's the risk of not. You know, so reliable devices will really help you keep them productive and profitable. And lastly, you need, to, you need to figure out your price based off of the issues that you've discovered. You can lump in the, lump in the cost of a replacement here, excuse me, along with other project work for solving, solving other issues that you may have, that you may have covered. Um, but this is really about kind of taking this and using a network assessment as, as the tool to help you cement uh, some of these findings and turn them into recommendations and actions. And again, can't reiterate this enough. It's all about the value. So it's less about this specific device is out of date and needs to be replaced. It's more about, you know, here, here, is, here is the impact that this will have. And this is the recommendation I'm making based off of that. So, you know, we promised, uh, promised to get into a couple of numbers here. Um, Brad, do you kind of want to just walk through uh, some, some example bundles here? Yeah, so what we did is just showing you, you know, with and without the, the, the financing and, and maybe I know there's a question, Pat, about the uh, managed service cost, but what we'll talk, maybe we can talk about in the QA. But what we looked at here is, you know, what, here's a typical managed network service fee. So you have your, you know, normal fee for uh, managing, you know, desktop, laptop application. This, this fee is really focused on the managed network. And so we we priced it around $40 uh, per user for a 25 user site. And you can see the monthly bill is a thousand. You know, if we looked at that kind of kit, we spec'd out a couple cal switches, some Rocky APs, ASA firewall. You know, the upfront payment just kind of in round numbers is about $9,000. So if you're gonna buy that upfront, uh, you know, that would be about 9,000 from distribution. That's, that, that was targeted more at your cost than uh, end user cost, but, uh, where we're trying to keep numbers round. If you look at scenario two, this involves, you know, using the Cisco life science, uh, financing through Great America. And that 9,000 would translate to a monthly payment of 250. So what you're presenting your customer is really, you know, either pay upfront 9,000 or $1,000 a month for networking, network uh, managed networking fees, or 1250 for the hardware and for the fees with no upfront payment. So hopefully, that's something I know in talking to partners that makes it, that's a lot more digestible than the whole 9,000 upfront, especially for, you know, smaller businesses where cash is, uh, cash is, uh, you know, not, not readily available or that much cash is not readily available. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. Um, just one question. I know, I know we're talking quite a bit around, uh, you, you know, dollars here. One of the questions that came up is, is this only available to Americans at this point? Yeah, that's uh, that was good. I forgot to mention that. Uh, so this Great American Financial Services, you know, this is not a Cisco Capital program. This is Cisco Capital working with Great American Financial Services. Currently, they only do business in the U.S. They are looking uh, to expand to cap, uh, Canada. But as we, you know, this is a new program for Cisco. We, you know, traditionally we haven't done something like this. Uh, so we are working with Great America here, and we will be looking at other regions um, in the future. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's only limited to, to the U.S. at this time. All right. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. All right. So I guess you, know, as we're starting to get more and more towards the end here, uh, one of the things that we did want to share, and this was a great finding that. That we've uh, that we've gotten through some of our really successful partners is you know even after you've shown the client and the, or the prospect the issues on their environment uh, and, and and provided the recommendations that would ultimately improve the performance and the reliability of those devices uh, and you offered you know a very very reasonable proposal to make that all happen well what happens if they 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 say no what happens if they say they don't want 
managed network services. Now, this is, you know, obviously this is something you don't want to happen often, but you know, it's, it's obviously, it is going to happen. So what you do need to do is you need to make it clear that since they've declined this service, you know, your managed, you, you know, the managed network services, uh, the managed network services element rather, uh, it, it, what it does mean is that your managed services agreement does not cover the remediation of the issues that you've discovered, right? And that seems to be a pretty straightforward conclusion. You know, I'm making a recommendation. I say, here are the issues. Here's what's going to happen if you if you don't fix it. Um, you know, stating but stating that explicitly is has been a really really successful thing that we've seen some of our partners do. Uh, and, and specifically, we've seen a lot of our partners actually have their prospect or their client sign a risk waiver, meaning that you know if you know, if anything happens here, I've, I've educated you, I've explained the options to you, uh, and you have made the decision that this risk isn't worth taking on my managed network services. Now, this risk waiver, what this really does is, it, you know, obviously refine, defines and that you are, and you are not, sorry, you are, it defines what you are and what you are not responsible for, uh, but can ultimately serve to help change the discussion from a really tactical kind of IT management discussion to, to much more of a strategic business risk discussion. So you end up engaging with more senior people of the organization, uh, which again, translates this into more of a business, business decision than a technical decision. So we've seen this idea of a risk waiver work really, really, really well uh, as an outcome of a network assessment if they choose not to go with one of your services. Because the, the unfortunate reality here is, you know, it's not an if, but typically a when. Right. So if you're making recommendations saying that, you know, this device is out of warranty, it's been out of warranty for a really long time. You know, Cisco gear, Cisco gear is awesome, but it's not going to last forever. You know, so the conversation really is about a when in these types of situations uh, and having that risk waiver makes the conversation really serious. It makes them say it makes them really understand kind of the gravity of what you're recommending. Uh, and typically they'll have to escalate that up the chain and get other people to sign off on this, you know, and once it gets to, you know, a CFO or otherwise, you know, now they're signing something that's stating, you know, stating that there's going to be an impact to the business value and, the, and there's a business risk here, not just the technology one. So anyways, a really, really interesting thing that, that we've seen some of our successful partners do. Uh, definitely take a, I would definitely suggest taking a look at it and seeing how you can uh, employ that within your practice. So that pretty much uh, that pretty much summarizes kind of what uh, what we wanted to chat today. Um, before we get into kind of a Q and A, uh, first we got our offer for offer offer from uh, from Cisco here. Brad, do you want to just explain this promotion? Yeah, so this is just the Great America. We're just giving you the URL one more time so you can go check it out. And again, you know, uh, we'll have. I think there's a form to fill. I was just on the site and I can't remember what's on it, but there is a form. You will, you can, you read about kind of the requirements for it, but we encourage everyone to take advantage of it, you know, rather than have them sign the risk waiver with this new program, the cost gets spread out over 36 months. It should be much easier for them, uh, much more appealing to upgrade the network rather than sign, uh, sign the risk waiver. So we're, we're really excited about this. Yeah, it's awesome. I think this is a really, really great program that MSP should uh, take a serious look at. Um, and you know, from the Ovic side, we've got we've an offer here too. Um, if you're not a partner and if you're really interested to, to, to learn more about this integration and how it can help you gain deeper insight into your clients' networks, um, you can also get a free coffee on us. So feel free to book a demo at ovic.com slash Cisco19 uh, to get your Starbucks gift card. So now with that all, that all being said, let's jump into the Q&A portion here uh, and we'll uh, go through any questions that have been raised. Uh, if you do have to head off, I appreciate your time. Uh, it's been a great webinar today. As Sarah mentioned, this, will be, this has been recorded and will be posted up on opic.com slash franklymsp. And uh, have a great day if you can't stick around, but I think we've got a couple of good questions to, to answer here. Yeah, let me take one from uh, Gustavo Lopez. Uh, so. On the Great America, the way it works is that uh, the, the the client is responsible for the lease, and so how it works is that you, uh, if you're using QuoteWorks or Sell, you can actually uh, use that tool. There's a Great America plugin or button on there to get a quote from that. Once they get the customer information, your client's information, they'll qualify based on your client, not on you, because the client's responsible for that. 
and they'll send out the bill. So everything, Great America sends out the bill. What they'll do for you though, is if you wanna buy it through distribution, you're doing the purchase as MSP, they'll pre-fund you. So before, as soon as you approve the client and you want pre-funding, they'll pre-fund you 50 to 70%, you buy the equipment, after you install it, then they'll reimburse you for the other 50 to 30%. And going forward, they will remit the bill to the, the customer. So you're out of the loop on that. And in fact, with Great America, one of the things you can do is say you have your monthly charge, you could have Great America collect it for you and on your behalf so the customer gets one bill for the hardware and for your services. And then they do the collection, they're responsible for that. Once they get, they collect, they will pay you back. So that, that helps a lot of partners because it reduces the daily <laughs> days uh, outstanding on, on bills. They've seen you know, a lot of partners reported that and also, you know, Great America is uh, probably better at collecting than uh, you are. Um, so those are some of the benefits. And again, you can go to uh, www.greatamerica.com slash Cisco to get more information. So I hope that answers your question, Gustavo. Awesome. So, uh, Pat, do you want to take the next one? I, I got yeah, I'll jump into some of the, uh, a couple of other ones here. Um, so Alex was asking about the, the firmware recommendations. You know, does 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 Avic actually perform this, the firmware update, or or just kind of give you the information? Um, at this point, we are just surfacing the information. Um, specifically, we don't alert on it just yet. Something we definitely want to do, but right now, it's, we're really focused around getting the information, putting it into reports for the purposes of network assessments. Uh, where we actually, where we'd love to be eventually, is alerting on it, and even you know, even better, we'd love to be able to push firmware. Uh, it's not something we do today, but it's definitely something we'd uh, we'd love to do in the future. And I think there's one from Chris on best practices on um, cost modeling the network as a service. I think we should we showed some pricing in there, but uh, I know you have more history around that path than I do. Yeah. So so Chris was asking, you know, is there best practices or kind of market based cost modules for you know, the, the network as a service or managed network services to, to, to kind of understand the costs and, uh, and such. You know, I, I think the, there's, the, Chris, I think we can reach out to you offline to send you even more content, but I think as a, as a part of our, pro, uh, as our per prospect pitch and sell kit, uh, which is something we launched not too, too long ago, uh, there's definitely some content on kind of managed network services and what that is. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll reach out to you, Chris, afterwards and, and uh, share that. Um, otherwise, if Sarah's listening, maybe you can uh, send a link as, send a link in the chat as well. Yeah, um, I'm already having Chris's uh, partner success manager reach out. He has some questions about 768K day. Um, so Chris, uh, I'll have Lisa send you those materials as well in that email. Well, awesome. Thanks, Sarah. And I saw another question from Hal, and I'll take that. And said, uh, end of sale usually comes before end of support. And that's true. I mean... I think and I'm going by memory, so usually end, you have an end of sale announcement and then depending on the time frame, it could be different by product family. You know, the end of sale is six months after that. End of support is usually five years after we announce end of sale. Uh, but in between there, three years after we announce end of sale, is the last time we'll do product vulnerabilities. So for two years, we'll have support, we'll do war any warranty, but there won't be any software updates. So that three years after end of sale announcement is key because any vulnerabilities that come after that, they won't be addressed. Um, but, you know, what we talked about at Avic, there's, you know, a number of things that come up, you know, uh, end of sale and firmware. You know, we're working to try to make this uh, as much visible in Avic as, as possible because I know these are key things for you. And again, you know, this is, you know, we, what we see is kind of this warranty and software and service is kind of the first step in, with Avic. And uh, we're looking forward to having, you know, in continued integration and making your lives easier and providing you more information uh, so that you could do your job better or more efficiently. Awesome. All right. Um, I got a, I'm, I'm, well, I got a couple other things to follow up with Chris specifically on, but uh, thanks for asking that. I think these some other questions around, um, you know, is this pulling additional metrics regarding Cisco devices and Avic? 
Uh, so that's Matthew's question. So the integration that we've talked about here is with the Cisco services APIs. So this is going out into Cisco, um, Cisco's you know, main APIs, so not the device specific information. So this, this is more around lifecycle management. So it doesn't include any, any additional metrics around the devices themselves in terms of utilization or any additional alerts. Um, the, yeah, the focus right now of this integration was specifically more around lifecycle information. Um, but as, uh, as you know, we obviously continue to work through and get deeper and deeper on devices as much as possible as well. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that. First of all, the lifecycle information comes uh, from a central group. Meraki information is not in that database at this time, so you would get that from the Meraki dashboard. But for ASA, Catalyst, ISRs, that information is in there as well. I think in general as a trend, and I kind of alluded to talk about earlier, you know, the newer Cisco products, especially the 9Ks and some of the new firepower products. Uh, you know, before we were limited to SNP CLI, and I think we've you know come around and even our own tools don't like to use SNP and CLI. So we are opening the APIs and we are you know working with Avic um, kind of to kind of share that to improve the experience because certain things. And I don't know, like password changes, I think, came up as a big thing, you know. Uh, and we certainly at Cisco have to change our password frequently. It can be done probably more efficiently through Avic than through some of our tools. So, you know, we hope to work with, uh, with uh, them and kind of, again, make it so that uh, you can manage, you know, save you time and, again, streamline your operations around these kind of basic things that, uh, you know, are are critical to get done but are very simple to do awesome actually i think that uh, that goes through pretty much all of our questions so uh again we can probably stick around a few more minutes in case there's any other last second questions um otherwise you know th again thanks again for for joining us here um sarah if you want to take it over for sure. Um, yeah, so as Pat said, thanks for joining us here. Uh, the webinar will be available at avic.com slash frankly MSP in a few hours. So hopefully by end of day today. Um, Brad, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your experience. I know this Great America offer has really piqued a lot of interest. So uh, it's a pretty hot topic these days. Um, and for those of you who are still around, I posted in the, the chat panel, but please come join us on the Frankly MSP community on LinkedIn. Um, we have a ton of great conversations on there and share a bunch of resources uh, similar to the conversation today, all about growing your MSP business and generating new revenue. Um, I'd love to see you there. Uh, I manage that group as well, so feel free to request to join and I can connect with you there. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks everyone, have a great day.